Hello and welcome. Tonight, one of the most critical issues in India, the safety of women. Wherever you look, a sea of awful statistics. Rape, murder and violence directed at females across the country. But is there now another story? Are women fighting back and will new laws help them succeed? I'm The Outsider. This is our motion. India is no place for women. Our two panelists who agree with that view are Shoma Chowdhury, managing editor of Tehelka News Magazine. Last year, Newsweek picked her as one of 150 power women who shake the world. And Flavia Agnes, a women's rights lawyer who's been extensively involved in the women's movement for the last three decades. Speaking against them, Pallavi Shroff, senior partner at the law firm Amachand Mangaldas. Last year, she was named by Euromoney as best lawyer in dispute resolution in Asia and Shabana Azmi, one of India's best-known actresses and a social and women's rights activist. She's a former member of the Upper House of the Indian Parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our panel. So I'm now going to ask Shoma Chowdhury for her top three points for supporting this motion, please. Yeah, Tim, uh, the reason why I'm standing so strongly with the motion of the House is that I believe the kind of misogyny and regressive attitudes that India has to its women is not an incidental thing, but it really permeates the skin of our society. It, it permeates our institutions, uh, you know, our commentators, our media, our cultural vanguards, which is our filmmakers and writers, and most dangerously, women themselves. You know, it's not the eruption of the occasional heinous incident that makes this such an important and disturbing topic because brutality against women is as old as the story of history itself, you know. What makes it problematic is that as a society, we don't even feel enjoined to speak the language of modernity, you know, which would enshrine individual rights, which would enshrine uh, gender equality. And this attitude makes it... Uh, makes even the kind of progressive legislative framework that, you know, if you separate the Indian state and Indian society, it's true that the legislative framework is progressing, but the implementation on ground is always faulty because this attitude is so deep-seated. As a journalist, you know, I could give you n number of anecdotes that bears that out, but it might be much more powerful to just look at the life cycle of a woman in India and start at the beginning, you know, start at the birth and the horror kicks in. The female feticide numbers India has ranks amongst the highest in the world. It's 940 females for every 1,000 male. You, you scale that up to a billion people and you'll have a measure of just how many million baby girls are being killed every year. The official statistic is 10 million in a decade. And, you know, because it's so underreported, that's a very, very, uh, uh, you know, the, the figure's likely to be much higher. So that metaphor of obliteration, you know, that, that death at birth, that kind of rank misogyny, that discrimination, that hatred, just pursues a woman right through every phase of, the, of her cycle of life. A girl child is less likely to go to school than a boy, is less likely to be fed than a boy. Her malnutrition rates are likely to be higher than a boy. She is more likely to be trafficked than a boy. You know, when, when she gets married, the shadow of dowry looms over her. Could After you come her to marriage, close, please? Yeah, and so after her marriage, you know, uh, the, the transactions of dowry are going to dog her. As a childbirth, she's just a birthing machine. Okay. And just to, to wrap that, Tim, it boils down to the circumstance of rape. You know, how the society looks at a rape victim really sums up the misogyny of the society. The okay. woman is always the okay. provocateur. I have to stop you. And she, uh, Everybody has right. to yeah, abide sure, by these rules. Sure. So Shama we'll Chaudhary, thank you very much. If India is such a rotten place for women, why do you stay? Why I stay is because, you know, the pushback is always there. I'm, I mean, I'm talking about the kind of... It's, it's a big pushback when you look at the figures, isn't it? I mean, there are, India's women are, are pushing uh, the envelope in so many areas. Business, uh, politics. Um, there's some incredible role models out there, aren't there? Well, the role models are just uh, the pinpricks, you know, and as I said, it's, it's, the, it's the deterrence, but the motion of the house is that India is no place for women, and that really speaks of endemic kind of attitudes to women. You say We're this, not it discussing permeates whether... all your institutions. What about civil society? I mean, there isn't a single piece of legislation, according to the Times of India, relating to women's rights, environment, education, that hasn't come from civil society groups, including women, who are very strong in those civil society yes, groups. Yes, Tim, and if, if my opening remarks, the point I made is that why this attitude is so disturbing is because you can make the most progressive legislations, but its implementation on ground will never be satisfactory because that society is permeated with this attitude. But all the opinions polls show that women are getting more optimistic in India, more optimistic. 
A Nielsen poll but last year said a majority of Indian women believe they have greater opportunities than their mothers. That's progress, isn't it? Well, Tim, you'll have to tell me where the opinion polls were conducted. What is the base of the uh, opinion poll? You know, are they polling Dalits? Are they polling Muslim women? Are they polling rural India? Are they po polling women from Haryana? Or are they polling South Bombay? Yeah, but you're not you know? questioning. So, there, there, there is more optimism. Women are doing better in business. I mean, a Wharton Business School said women entrepreneurs in India expect to see their businesses growing by 90% over the next five years. Yes, Tim, because, you know... These if are you, big expectations coming from confidence, yes, drive, Tim. determination. If, if you ask me, is India a single window in sight, you know, I'd be the last person to say it is. But if you're, so if you ask me to take a black and white position that there's absolutely no signs of hope in this uh, society, I wouldn't be saying that. But am I but saying there is that it a is a misogynist? Is it an endemically misogynistic society today? Yes, I'll back that. Is there creative pushback on it? Yes, okay. there is. Shoma Chaudhary, thank you very much indeed. I'm going to now ask Pallavi Shroff, please, to, for your top three points against the motion. I think being a lawyer, a lot of my sort of points are uh, around the law in this country. This country has a varied number of, um, so, is, has a varied society at different levels. And so when we talk of women in general, we must keep in mind the different strata of society that we are going to talk about. There are those in the cities and those in the rural areas and those in the semi-urban. Each one of them have different things uh, to deal with. And each one of them is getting a better deal as the years go by. I think one of the first and most important points for me is the changing status of women. As we've seen over the last maybe 10 years, 15 years, and I don't think I can put it way beyond that, but I think a lot has changed. And I can speak for myself. When I started uh, working in the profession 31 years ago, there were about five women who practiced. Today, there are probably 500 and more who practice as seriously as you can see them practicing the law. Uh, more and even in rural India and tribal women see far more progress than they have seen in the past. Um, more women in business, senior positions, 9% uh, of women in senior positions in 2011, and they, we come to 14% in 2012. CEOs from 1% increased to 10%, as against global numbers of 8% or to 9%. Women in India are certainly having a change in positions. In politics, we see very senior women. Uh, we had uh, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. We've had Sonia Gandhi being one of the most powerful women in the world. We've had three or four uh, chief ministers who are absolutely powerful. I have my colleague who has been in the upper house in the Rajya Sabha herself. So we can see a number of women coming forth with the reservation bill again. There's much more. Probably we must be one of the only countries in the world where the constitutional guarantees equality to women in the various fields of life from which they come. Would you please come to a close? Yeah. So these are my at least three important points, apart from the development of the law that has taken place over the years. Pallavi Shraf, thank you very much indeed. You've probably been in this building now for about two hours. In the two hours that you've been here, two brides somewhere in India have been burned to death in dowry disputes. Are they part of the group that you think are doing better in India? Is, there, is their lot improving? For the two, I do not for a minute sort of belittle or... And that's over uh, 8,000 a year uh, who right. get burned these but days in India. But there are far many young women who are now pushing back on the issue of dowry. There are a number of instances, and we read about it, the press sort of highlights these issues. Pushing back, but the National Crime Records Bureau shows that where rape and sexual assault are concerned, this is the fastest growing crime in India. Uh, there have, this is the how, age how do they fit into right. your everything's rosy I or think everything's these getting are the better very scenario? Young, the young people who are sitting here, and many like them, when they face such a situation, they resist, they push back, they don't agree to such marriages, and I think hats off to all of those women who stand up for their rights. And the 17 million women, girls, female fetuses that have been killed or gone missing over the last 20 years, I they were able to fight back, were they? Uh, unfortunately, not them. The but one I in think... four girls who get lost no. in Punjab, they're also fighting back, are they? 25% of girls in Punjab are getting lost, murdered, disappeared. I are they doing better? No, I think the whole thing stems really from lack of adequate ed education to women. You give them good education, generation Probably after generation. Sure they're being murdered. 
They're being murdered. What no, point is education? What it starts education? From... What is that a protection of it, some kind? No, there is protection by the state. And then there is protection from the civil society. Pretty, pretty inadequate protection from the state, then, wouldn't there you say? To lose society. 17 million women over the last yes, 20 but there years? Is a That's city. bigger than a lot of countries. No, there is civil society that has stood up for murders and that have actually brought the society together to protest against such murders. Is Punjab a good place for women? Losing, losing one in four of, of its women? There. Number of is it, women it's it's a good place, is it? There are a number of women working there, living there, getting educated. Because you've got a 75% chance of survival, if you're lucky. No, I think it's much more than that. Okay, Pallavi It's Shruff. much more than Thank, that. Thank you very much indeed. I'm going to turn now to Flavia Agnes and ask her for her top three points in support of the motion, please. Okay, I think, firstly, uh, let me explain that we have two Indias, the haves and the have-nots. So let's be very clear, like sitting here in this audience, we, have, we can make choices. But I want to even question those choices. Going beyond that, when we say, yes, we can go to the police station. If I'm molested, I want to ask our audience, girls, how many in a city like Bombay with all our education and consciousness can actually approach the police station? And what ca happens to you when you're there? Uh, do you believe that I will get justice? I will complain of sexual molestation, harassment, rape, and I will get justice. I don't think many of them actually believe this. Then, if this is the situation in Bombay, then you can see Haryana, you can see Punjab, you can see Madhya Pradesh. We have elected representatives one third by constitutional amendment. How often we, do we read a Dalit woman paraded naked? Now, a Dalit woman raped. She is a panchayat member. She might be a sarpanch, but the caste prejudices and gender prejudices go so deep that She's there because her husband permits her. If her husband doesn't permit her, she has to go back. That is civil society for you. On the March 8, 2011, a woman who was working for, uh, for a bank, I think, jumped down and killed herself while all of us were giving March 8 fabulous lectures. And she had two children and she killed both of them. My question for, against the motion is, what kind of insecurity makes a woman kill her children and herself on March 8th, which we've been celebrating for last like two decades, celebrating the victory, celebrating the uh, positive impacts. Secondly, I also want to say, politically, our country has done pretty well for women. We come, we create around 25 uh, in countries of, I say, 135. But when it comes to economic, we have not done too bad, we're okay. But when it comes to social issues like health and survival, out of 135 for the 2011, we ranked 132. Could I ask so you to come to a close, please? That's it. Flavia Agnes, thank you very much indeed. Um, a point which uh, Pallavi Shroff made about politics, about women in politics. Are you saying they have no influence? They have the most powerful individual in the country is a woman. The leader in the opposition in the Lok Sabha is a woman. The chief minister of Delhi is a woman. Has been since 1990. So many opposition leaders are women. Four states are women chief ministers. Yes. Does it then percolate down to the woman in the village? That's my question. Do these but women? But it shows that can... women can make it in this country. Most doesn't of them it? have a male counterpart who helps them to make it there, including Indira Gandhi. If she was. But Jawan whatever Nadu, means are at their disposal, they can make it. But there it. are hundreds and thousands of women who, if the husband says no, you can't be there, they will not be there. If your if your father says you have to stay married despite your dowry harassment, they will stay there, and the only weapon they have is to kill themselves. The only resistance uh, they show and the is difference, to kill them. And the difference they're making, not just at national level, but in local as uh, level as well, and the panchayat I'm committees, about the panchayat. local yes. I mean, which, which were complimented, which were complimented by UN Women last year, who said that over a million women are actively participating in matters of local government. Policy formulation, decision making in these bodies. This is real power at local level for women, isn't it? Let us look at um, child sex ratios. No, just, just, let, let's just look in at that political same village, participation. In those same, same villages, what happens then? Let us look at the marriages. So it's up to women to use their influence at local level, isn't it? The marriages of these women, the very same women who have this political power, cannot exercise it in their domestic relationship. The, the relationship between a man and women, husband and wife, has not changed for these women. But if they That's didn't the have this, this political power, there would be no hope of changing the situation Absolutely. in India. I so, agree with you. So it I has to filter you. down from the positions that they have won by their determination, doesn't I it? Think, this change that I think you're we talking need to about. look at sexuality. 
I think we need to examine marriage. I, I, and we need to look at these young women who have apparently all the choices. And tomorrow when their parents select their boy or they select a boy, do they have the freedom from girls sitting here so, to so, choose so, a boy so, of their so, choice so, so which the parents you, oppose? So why do, you, why do you stay? Why do you stay? By supporting the motion, I am not saying that nobody should stay in India. No woman should be staying in India. And that will be detrimental for our entire purpose. We are saying, pointing these out okay. so that we All can right. have some changes. Flavia Agnes, okay. I'm going to now turn to Shabana Azmi for your three top points against the motion. India is a country that lives in several centuries simultaneously. We have people living back to back in the 18th, 19th, 20th and 21st century. And all our people at any given time and place encapsulate all the contradictions that come from being a multi-religious, multi-ethnic, deeply hierarchical, uh, caste-based society. And so it is with the position of women. So on the one hand, you see that there are women in positions of power, whether it is in politics, whether it's in the corporate sector, whether it's in film and television. And on the other uh, side, female feticide is still being practiced. And every day we hear uh, horrific stories about savagery done against women. But I have hope, A, because India is a democracy, and our constitution guarantees equal rights for all citizens. B, you have referred to it yourself, a silent revolution that is taking place because a million women are now exercising power into decision-making uh, positions through the Panchayat Raj. And this is leading to women now asking to be not passive recipients, but active participants. There has been a change at policy level because the government seems to have realized that the GDP cannot be the only factor that determines the health of a nation. It has to be the human development index of which empowerment of women is a very strong measure. And so if you look at policy at the moment, the girl, child and women are being placed at the center of development. I work in a very tiny uh, village in uh, Mijma Azamgarh, which is supposed to be the back of beyond and also in the slums in Mumbai. And I can see women negotiating more place for themselves, whether they are doing it in their interpersonal relations vis-a-vis -vis their husband or they are asking for their rightful place in the sun. To me, what is important that is happening is that there is a mindset transformation. And that in as patriarchal society as us, the fact that there is a mindset change to me is of immense value and that's why I think there is hope. Of course, discrimination exists, but like you said, there is an active civil society, forces of close, resistance, yeah, forces of resistance through the women's movement that is making that possible. Shibana Azmi, thank you very much. If there is such a change, why are there 600,000 cases of feticide every year in India, up from only 30,000 10 years ago? It is a shameful situation and we should have zero tolerance for it. It hasn't been given yeah, the attention that Yeah, but what price that your it... laws that you have so much faith in if 600,000 cases of feticide are being reported every year and one of the latest cases here in Maharashtra state a couple arrested for doing 20 to 40 abortions a day and feeding fetuses to the dogs. Yes. It, feeding it, fetuses to it the is, dogs. It, it, and you it describe that as a contradiction in Indian society. It is, it is it's murder. It's, it's murder, yeah, it? is it? murder. It is murder. And should be There's no nice word for as it. Such. Contradiction no, it, doesn't do it, it, does it? Is, it is murder. And that's the way it should and be And it's treated. getting worse. The figures are getting worse year on. General crimes against women, according to the uh, National Crimes Record Bureau, have risen over the last five years, both in absolute numbers but and as a percentage of all I, crimes. I you can't get that, away from those facts, I believe can you? that violence against women has the tacit approval of society all over. It's not particular only to India. It is an inbuilt thing that exists in our society. It seems to be culturally acceptable to get rid of female fetuses, I, isn't it, in large parts I, of the country? It is shameful, but it is changing most certainly because I work at the grassroots and I can see that is happening. And it is happening because women are no longer ready to be victims themselves. And they are getting up and saying that we will not accept it. And that is a change. It's a question of whether you think the glass is half full or half empty. They're getting up and saying they won't accept it. Like a, like a young lady called Sonali Mukherjee. Nine years after three men in her neighborhood of Dunbad in Jharkhand State poured acid over her face because she refused their advances, the men are out on bail and she can't still bring a case against them. Nine years with all your laws, all your constitutional amendments and provisions, 
This young lady cannot get justice in nine years. What use is all these bits well, of paper that you I, talk about? I also think the fact that there are so many more cases that are being reported is because women are finally in a position where they're even being able to go and talk about it because right. otherwise society had a way of turning on the victim and blaming her. Right. That is changing. Shabana Azmi. We'll leave it there for the moment. We'll take a break now. When we come back, a question to the audience. Who's to blame for the plight of women in India? Men or women themselves? Join us in a few moments. Welcome back. During the break, we put a question to our studio audience. Who's to blame for the plight of women, men or women themselves? The result was 64% said men, 36% said women themselves. Shoma Chaudhary, a quick reaction on that. Are you horrified that 36% blamed women? No, I'm not, because Tim, as I said at my, in my opening remarks, that I feel so much of this stems from the fact that women themselves are conditioned to be cruel to women, you know? Okay. That's how deep-seated our self-hatred is. All right, Pala Vishraf, what do you think? Uh, I, I don't think women are entirely to blame, but there's no... Uh, what do you actually... mean entirely to blame? No, are I they to blame it, at all? Uh, maybe a little bit, because as uh, Soma said, it's the women who have to fight for their rights and stand up. If they don't do that, then you know, they st keep getting pushed back. Okay, Flavia, so Agnes, I think quick, it's quick equally, reaction to that I vote. 64% said men were to blame, 36% said I women. I think the question had to be posed differently. It's a patriarchal value system. How mm -hmm. men and women both see each other, we both see the men, both see the next generation of women. So we have a huge problem called mother-in-law, daughter-in-law. Okay. But we have also a problem mother and daughter. Okay, Shibana has me. I also Quick reaction, think, and then I, I'm going to throw... I think that it is a patriarchal mindset that makes women also sometimes take positions because they're victims of that patriarchal system. But really and truly, it is not the woman who's to blame because if you look at her power equation, she never ever has power. And so when she has it in those very small little spots, she's likely okay. to misuse it. And you had power in a very little spot in the upper house of parliament. No, I had quite All a right. lot of power. Okay, okay. So you were one of the <laughs> and exceptions. And I exercised it very right. well. Okay. With discretion. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to throw the question, the motion of our debate open to the audience. India is no place for women. Uh, if you have a question, please put up your hands. We'll get a microphone to you. Um, lady right at the top, if you'd stand up, we'll get a microphone to you. Um, I would like to ask in question that uh, will only educating people and uh, uh, creating different types of laws change this kind of a situation which, is, which we are seeing today in the society? Flavia Agnes, you want to take that? It will not, because now it's become, for the last two or three decades, it's become very fanciful to have new law. Every issue that we have asked for, immediately the government responds with a change in law. But what has it amounted to at the ground level? Has anything, any of our institutions changed because there's a change in law? Have the judges changed? Have the police changed? Ha have the court trials changed? Is it still as humiliating as before? When I put the first question, how many of you will, if you're raped or molested, go to the police station? Now, unless we get an answer to that, changing law by itself and making rape into sexual okay, assault well, uh, you, is you, not going to You raised answer. the question. Let's, let's actually ask the audience. If, if they were attacked, how many, how many people have gone to the police station? And how many chose not to? Probably about roughly the same amount, actually. Roughly but, the same amount. <clears throat> may, may I just... We'll, we'll come and discuss, if we may, some of, some of the incidents that led you to go to the police station or led you into this dilemma. What happened, yeah, what happened after you went is the most important question. What happened to that particular incident is important. OK, I'd like to hear from somebody who did make a complaint and what, their, uh, what the response was in the police station. Uh, lady there, yes, you. Would you stand up? And tell us what what uh, uh, would you mind telling us what happened to you that, yeah, that took you to the police station? It wasn't a case of molestation or any other kind of a thing. But I was uh, traveling in an auto 
with my friend and the auto driver started making bad remarks and misbehaving with us and uh, I uh, complained to him saying that he cannot behave that way and I'll take him to the police station. He drove us to the police station directly and uh, after I went into the police station and complained to the person sitting there, uh, he said, uh, Madam, you are a woman, Why? what are you doing here? You should go back and you shouldn't enter this place and he just asked us to just leave and he didn't even bother to go and you know, arrest that guy, the auto driver. So I think uh, when ma'am spoke about, you know, the women standing up for themselves, there have been cases where women like me are standing for us, but we haven't been getting justice. Shiban Azmi, what do you think of that? I think that we need a critical number of women who start doing that on a regular basis. And it is very unfortunate, such incidents. But I think if enough number of people start doing it, then it will make a difference. Pallavi Shraf, you were talking about how effective the laws were. Didn't help this young lady very much, did they? Uh, the laws uh, take their time to get effective. Yes, we've had much advancement of the law. How long are people supposed to wait? I think this is a movement that young women have started. And one or two cases get reported that they're not have, they haven't got the justice. I think it comes down to society reacting to it, and then that's the change that the but younger look, women are bringing about show, themselves. Show Chandra, yeah, you may, want to jump may I in? just, you know, I just want to clarify a few things. One is that do we need a progressive legislative framework? Of course we do. You know, is it our position that we should not have good laws? I don't think that's our position at all. The position we are debating is what kind of a place is India today? For it's women. not about where it will be, you know, 20 years hence. The, the fact that there is creative pushback, that there are small incidences of positive change, of course there is. But the point is that there is a hierarchy of attention. First of all, the, you know, when we said strata of society, I don't believe that violence against women is located only amongst the dispossessed or the Dalits. You take a, a poll test in South Bombay and the kind of internal domestic violence that goes on and women are too afraid to speak up amongst the most rich and the most educated of our class of society is itself terrible. So the simple point okay. I want to make, the simple point I want to make is that this attitudinal change has to begin with education. It has to begin with the cultural environment in which we live, the language in which we speak to each okay, other okay. and what is deemed kosher. All right. Today All right. you have, no, you have no, I, I, yeah. I want to move on because I want to talk to somebody else who had uh, an experience at the police station. Um, when they took a complaint there. Uh, lady just in the row in front of you in green. Yes, yes. When yes. I work with Family Counseling Center, at that time I have filed some cases related to the Domestic Violence Act. But the police were asking us to wait for near about six to seven hours. And they were not even uh, uh, would like to pay attention to the written complaint. And then, uh, then they would like to ask us to you go back to home and then come on the next day. So this is what is the experience. So, so in they, the they were, station. you concluded they weren't interested. Yeah. Okay, anybody else want to share their experience? Lady in the front row there, if we can get it to you. Um, I've been following up some cases of minor girls who've suffered sexual assault and I'd like to uh, say a few things, a few observations. Uh, you yet have to convince a judge in the sessions court today that a girl should be examined in camera. It takes two to three years for a trial to reach its completion. If the investigation is shoddy, the police officer's uh, investigation is incomplete, bail is granted to the accused and the minor girl is sent to a home so that she's kept away from the accused. So he is out on bail, he's allowed to lead his life, and to ensure her safety, she's kept in a home. These are just a few observations about how girls suffer. Okay, thank you very much. Flavia Agnes, how representative is a case like this? I'll just give you conviction rates. Like, we have these fantastic laws, we have all the burden of proof, we have the police, we have so-and-so, we have so-and-so. Not even 10% get convicted. That means, of, uh, suppose if 10 girls go, only in one case there'll be conviction. If but that we're a long person, way from conviction if the police aren't interested in even in hearing the complaint. Aren't exactly. We? I mean, suppose you, you take a morcha, you uh, take somebody like me and say you have to file, and finally a case will be filed. But will it be investigated? Will it go further from there? Will it be charge sheeted? Will there be a verdict? What is the mindset of the judge? What is the mindset of the police? Have we changed all this? And we have not. And the easiest thing is to change the law. But have you gone beyond that? Pallavi Shraf, do you want to challenge you know, any of that? I think the problem that, you've that heard? yes, I want to. I think the problem is not only about trial in such cases where there is crime against women. Our problem here has been that all kinds of investigations and anything, any charge sheet that a police registers has been very slow, incomplete, 
or pathetic investigation, and I'm not talking of any social issues that you raise, which you take to the police. I think the police do a very shabby job of it. So I'm not s saying that the police do a good job of it. And but, it but, is insensitive, but, Ali, may I but just... police are, I'm not let, saying let, police let, are let, not let, insensitive. Let's let come in, let's come police in. Police are... Ali, I just want to ask, charging. you know, when we were saying that we are so optimistic because women are in power, you know, they're women and the top jobs in corporate, who has put police reform on a hot footing? Is it the most burning issue in the country today? Is women's education the most burning issue in the country today? Is our defense, is our budget allocations to all of this increased? It has not. When Tehelka did this expose, there were police officers who said, well, you know, things will change. We don't have enough uh, personnel to even okay. train our officers. Right. And there's been no action taken. Okay. That is the kind of apathy we have to these, in, these issues. You I'm going to move on and hear from a very brave man sitting towards the back. Yes, you, sir. Yeah, if you stand up. Uh, we are all talking that uh, we have to have our women empowered and uh, education is used as the best tool in our in, in this time to to empower these women uh, i would like to quote the example of a metro city like mumbai take competitive exams when women give these competitive exams and males give these competitive exams you see the iits for example the the percentage of women in ca on campus will be less than 10% does that mean that women have a little problem they are not that meritorious. I'm talking about merit here because even in our legislation for politics, women are supposed to be given 33% of seats so that they can come into the political framework. So what's, what's your point? My, my point is that is there, uh, can't women be uh, what they are on merit rather than you giving them a quota that, okay, this is your position, come back and fight the men. Okay, Shimon <laughs> Asma, <laughs> <laughs> What? When, when it comes to being in parliament, when parliament was first formed in 1952, we had 4% women. And today we have between 8 to 10%. Not because able women do not exist, but th because they have been actively kept out of the pale of politics by vested interests. And the only way you can ensure winnability and make a difference is by making sure that you give reservation to women. So it's an unequal, it's a three-legged race, it's unequal. And in order to create equality, whether you do it through education, you do it through access, you have to right what is a wrong. Shoma Chaji. Yes, you know, I support I, reservations, quotas. I, I absolutely do. I'm aghast at your position that, you know, it's not meritorious. I understand that the whole reservation issue in India has become complex. You know, it is flawed. But there is no way that you can do away with it because there is segments and segments of our society that have been historically wronged. And you have to be, you know, I, I'm a journalist on ground who goes to the ground. You see a Dalit woman, you cannot imagine the edifice of oppression that she faces, you know. If you're not going to put out a lifeline there and pull them out of that, that cesspit in which they are, there is never going to be a level playing field, you know. Societies are evolving uh, 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 organisms, you know, there will come a time when you don't need it and society itself will feel that. But the fact that today with just a little bit of push from segments of society that have been so dispossessed that we who have been privileged for centuries feel so threatened, you know, you should introspect okay. and see what do others feel who have never had just, that opportunity. Let me just go back you know? to the question, how do women perform when they get to these educational institutions? So they're just like the men. Actually, they outperform them, don't they? I mean, they outperform them, if you, if they you outperform look at the them in every education If you look at the CBSC results, for the last 10 years, it's always women who have come before, before men, at least for 10 years regularly. Sorry, it's a global phenomenon. Higher education, sir. It's a global phenomenon. Flavia Agnes, you want to come in? Yeah, I do want to come in because at the entry point, we do have women. At the professional entry point, also we have women. My question is that, if you really see, this is to you, uh, Pallavi Shroff, that how many women are there who are in practice? Because it's, practice is very rigorous. It demands so much. But if you're all the time also getting pregnant, also looking after the babies, and of, uh, looking after the exams, then you are forced to drop out, not only in India, globally, that you cannot do two jobs and three jobs. Then what do you do? If you keep on to the job, this one wants to compete with her husband. She wants to be better than him. If you move out, and then you say, sir, problem, she wants to be just housewife. Tomorrow, husband has another affair, woman is out of the house. Where do we go? What do we do? This is my profession. This is what okay. I do, is to give women, these women a, a semblance. And I want to tell them, don't give up your job. Don't trust this man, because tomorrow he's okay. going to right. move on Shra, and quick, have an affair. Quick and response. all of us who are professionals, we say, Oh, let her, I, let her I, have I, a quick response. 
I am a professional, <laughs> but I'm also a good okay. wife. I'm a good mother. I, I, get, I get your point. They I get your this. point. Let her, let her respond to it. Let, let, let her respond play, to it. Thank you. I have you. played all Thank those you. roles in my life. Correct. And, and uh, well, I am still here and practicing law. And I've seen in 30 years that I've been practicing, I've seen more and more women come into the profession, take the profession very seriously. They're as good as the men, sometimes even better. They share equal responsibility and they work as late, travel as much, and they're well-respected okay, professionals. Okay, I'm going to today. take another question. Um, where is it? Yes, you, lady on the third row there. Uh, sir, we need to know the mental aspect of what a woman is going through. So I want to know what about the mental space? Is the women getting a mental space to, in today's India? After having so much of dowry problems, female feticide, what is the emotional trauma she is going through? As it is in India, mental health has been ignored so much. What are we doing for it? So much Yeah, You know, I feel that a lot of what we're discussing will change with very tiny, tiny rebellions in each of us. You know, today when you were talking about, you mentioned, are women meritorious enough? Our immediate response was to prove how super women women are. My simple point is, why am I under the microscope? You know, there are enough shoddy men out there holding a lot of shoddy jobs, you know? Why is it that the moment a woman steps up or a Dalit steps up, they are meant to be paragons of excellence, you know? That is in itself a, a very oppressive regime. So, you know, I think we must, and that is what I said in my opening remarks, that we must speak a baseline language of modernity, which is individualism. You know, let every individual be themselves. Chibana Azmi, let, let me bring you Education in. is the answer, really. Where a woman today needs to know that she isn't responsible if she has a female child. It really depends on the male. And I have seen, again, small steps in my village in Mijwa and Azamgarh. Girls used to get married before the age of 18. And because of the education they received, they have now started saying, we refuse to get married before 18. And the entire school and the principal have all taken an oath that if any child is forced against her wishes, not only will they report to the police, they will also go and take a morcha outside the house. And since Which then, there's what? been uh, 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 okay. a demonstration. A demonstration. A demonstration. Okay. And after after that, there has been no single incident when the rule was that girls would get married at the age of 12. I can see it palpably happening. Why aren't there more of these marches, these demonstrations? I think because we need many, many people to come together. I'm always saying there's strength in numbers. And if you get civil society groups to actually take it But the situation is critical enough prison. for it. I mean, millions being murdered is critical enough to have a few people marching on the streets regularly, isn't no, it? No, of course. Of course, but the thing is, to do something with persistence takes a lot of time. And only very, very motivated groups do that. OK, lady, lady in the back row in black. Have, have, your, have your say now, have your say now. Yeah, uh, good evening. My question is that uh, to a certain extent, in fact, to a very large extent, even media affects the lives of the society. And the representation of women and the stereotypes which are attached to her have not really changed. A female protagonist, a very strong female protagonist has to be rescued by a male, always. And also a washing powder ad has to feature a woman. Why have the representations not changed? Shabana Azmi, this is straight to your door. Well, it is changing. The film industry. It, it is changing. There has been a clear change. There was a time when Mechu Prahungi, I will remain silent, was considered a virtue for women. And then that started changing and there was a lot of confusion. So first we had Rambos and then we had Rambolinas. There were women in drag doing the same thing that men were doing. But now if you look at what is happening, if you look at Vidya Balan, if you look at the five films that she has done, she is definitely a protagonist who is challenging all norms. And the interesting thing is that change is happening within mainstream cinema and being accepted by uh, the public, which is the most important thing. So, so that change is happening. Yeah, you know, I don't feel this optimistic about Hindi cinema, unfortunately, you know, because I think for too much, you look at Karina, you look at Priyanka, you look at our really, Vidya Balan is one amongst a whole plethora of actresses, directors, scriptwriters, 
who still see women as an adjunct to male desire and male ambition, you know. And I agree with you. I feel we must be angrier, we must be pushing for more because just the fact that one person or two people or eight people are doing things is not enough in a society of a billion. So, I, so Bollywood's know, got to take its responsibilities more I think seriously. so. Bollywood is the thing that cements our imagination. You yeah, know, but people still keep going to the films. Maybe they shouldn't then. Because it's so reassuring. You know, you go there, you see nothing getting changes. prettier, Life nothing changes. Life goes on the same way. Yeah. No, but you know, film makers are not here to change society. They are here to make business. And if the audiences Shabana, can demonstrate, can you you say because that? if they want to demonstrate that this is what they want, they want films about empowerment of women and they'll run, let me assure you, all producers will make a beeline. So you cannot say you want one thing and then do the other. We also have a responsibility towards it. Okay. Uh, there's a lady in the front row. You had a question? Yeah, this is to the panelists about educated India, which is supposedly a lot easier to deal with. What do you think will make that big change then? The internet revolution came. We thought it would make a huge difference, and it hasn't. What were you expecting? It did, well, it empowered some of the younger women, and they, they could get jobs that they wouldn't have otherwise. They got a newfound respect from husbands and parents who allowed them to. But it never changed these mindsets. So what do you think will be the big revolution or what would be on your wish? What would actually make that change with just educated India? Pallavi Shroff. I think it's uh, women getting, uh, again, <clears throat> sort of uh, numbers happening, debates happening, the role of women, the changing role that you see, respect for the new woman, talking about that new respect for the new woman that you are seeing. I think it only has to be spread amongst society. And I'm talking of the educated society. The respect starts... Sounds like a very slow process. It is a slow process. Mindsets don't change overnight. Sometimes they take generations to change. I but that doesn't mean you don't have hope for the change. Flavia Agnes. So we're always asking questions to others. For me, you have to be the change you want to see. The choices that you make in education, in professional choices, in your marriage, uh, opposing violence inside your marriage, you have, whatever you say here, it's not one Shabana or one me or one somebody else. It has to be you. And unless you change, society will not change. At uh, least for the you, educated. How do you oppose violence in your own marriage? Because I am specialized in divorce law. Uh, women come to me, I'm a women's rights lawyer, particularly dealing with a divorce. But women take so long to come to me. They wait for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and, and they're really ruined. And what you said, depression, they're into depression, and they have no money, they have given so up everything. So you're saying walk out, walk out of an abusive marriage. There are different levels. You can go to a counseling center to begin with. You can go to your own parents and ask them to intervene. The parents must come and say like this, I, we will not tolerate, even at the cost of breaking this marriage. But don't this put woman. up with it, day Do after not day. put up with it, and, and how, what the women do, they put up with it until they cannot tolerate it. And that is why we have these bride burning cases. Every year, the number of women who burn themselves is increasing because these women who, like you, who are educated, who are uh, uh, studied in very uh, reputed institutions, have not been told what should they should do okay. when they are facing the right, violence. No, just, just a moment. I want to bring Shabana Azmi in here. I think it's women put up with too much. Yes, women put up with too much. They do not enlist support. They do not make it public. And very often what happens is in our society, parents believe that a girl should stay with the husband. That has to change. That mindset has to change where you say no violence will be tolerated against my daughter instead of saying, oh, he must have been in a bad mood and it's okay because for them, it is a matter of shame if the girl comes home. Shame the man who does it instead of being shamed because somebody has slapped her. But one says, one, you, you talk about all the things that women need to do, but as we speak, there are millions of women around India crouching in fear of the men around them, whether it's in their community or in their family or at their workplace, they're crouching in fear. What can you say to give them some hope of a better future apart from maybe in the future when education when, sinks you, in you went, yeah, and when, attitudes when, change? When they are... It's got to be laws being enforced, hasn't it? Yes, there are laws. There are laws in place, but they are not empowered enough 
to seek access to those laws. When you are crouching in fear, it's the worst place that you can be in. You can't go any lower than that. So fight back and you cannot fight back alone. You have to fight back enlisting okay. the support All of right. other people. I think, let me add on the laws. The laws are progressive. They're coming, becoming more and more progressive and most of all for people in the state. And that more and more irrelevant. No, and they, if they cannot go to court, we have provisions where someone like Flavia can take their case and go to court and get them justice. They themselves are not capable of going there, but there are concepts of public interest litigation and even an epistolary jurisdiction where you can write a postcard to the Supreme Court and get justice. Demand. So it's not that there the is Supreme nothing. Court responds to a postcard? It does. Tim, may I, may I say okay, two things? Please, yeah. Two very quick things Shama in Chaji. answer to you. My, my hot foot uh, areas of change would be economic muscle, you know? The only way that power equations between men and women will change is when women themselves are earners, can be decision makers. Their ability to walk out of a bad marriage will be much more. Their ability not even to walk out of a marriage, but to correct a marriage will be more if they are able to earn. And I think that okay. is something every woman must do. And number two, Tim, I, pl I place the media very, very culpable for the way that India is today. You know, there is such a hierarchy of attention. If there's one really high profile case there's a lot of noise around it. But every day, that sustained attention to these issues is just not there. I think every time a court rules that a raped woman must marry her rapist to, you know, to exclude the stigma, it should not be a two-inch okay. news brief All in right. a paper. Okay, Agnes. Yeah. I also blame our educational institutions. What are the values they teach them? Like the high school student or a college student. Ishi told that if you face violence in your home, these are the steps, one, two, three, four, five. If you are raped, this is what you have to do. These are the agencies that are going to help you. Please do not okay. tolerate violence. This education is not there. Not only the students, but even the teachers do not know. Okay. Even the teachers abide by these norms. You know, that's okay. the problem. Okay, all right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've unfortunately run out of time. We're going to vote now on the motion that India is no place for women. Please take your voting machines. If you support that motion, that is the side represented by those on my right, you're going to need to press button one. If you don't support that motion, the side represented by those on my left, it's button two. Whichever button you want to press, please do it now. Ladies and gentlemen, the audience has spoken and the verdict is in. 54% of you believe India is no place for women. 46% of you say it is. So the motion has been carried. Let me just look at the swing from the vote before the debate. In that vote, 32% said India was no place for women and 68% said it was. So there has been an enormous swing of 22% in favour of the motion. Quick reaction. You didn't convince them. Well, I didn't convince them, but it's not about me personally. It's about really trying to understand whether the glass is half, fill, uh, half full or half empty looking deep inside ourselves and saying complaint is not going to get us anywhere until we can be moved to action, whether it is small or whether it is okay, big. Okay, one brief comment from this side. Flavia? Well, you know, I'm so happy our students started with an optimism and they said that India is not all that bad. But I think a reality check is very essential for young people that you should know when you go out in the world. And I'm not only talking to women, I'm also talking to boys because they also have their sisters, they very have brief. their mothers. And I'm very happy that this will, you are voted, but this has to motivate you okay. to act. All right, thank you very much to our speakers. Thanks to you, the audience, here in the studio and around the world. Keep in touch with us via our website, www.theoutsider.tv. But for now, from the city of Mumbai in India, good night.